All right, so Rock Shocks have just released their new Zeb Lyric Pike uh, Super Deluxe, Deluxe, Super Deluxe uh, Coil, Deluxe Coil, which is cool. And um, everyone keeps asking me my opinion on it. I've had a think about it and uh, had a pretty decent look at all of them. I haven't ridden any of them yet, but um, this video is going to be primarily about my opinion of the Fox 38 versus the Zeb. So I've ridden a few Fox 38s now. I started on, I reckon the first one I rode would have been on the Merida E160, maybe? Or it was the Yeti SB150. It was one of those two, but um, I think it was the SB150. Um, can't remember. But anyway, I've ridden, I think I've ridden four different Fox 38s. Now at the start, I, you know, their new fork and whatever, I didn't really know too much and um, had to service the air spring to make sure these forks work well. That's the first thing I noticed was they were very variable. Um, you know, different people's bikes, you know, people would come to me like, oh, how's this feel? What do you think of the setup? And I'd check their pressure and tokens and whatever and, and see the support and, you know, try and calibrate and go, oh, that feels way different for the tokens and pressure you're running than a different Fox 38 tokens and pressure and what I learned was like all the Fox stuff uh, from the past they're very inconsistent with their amount of grease that they add to the positive and negative chambers when they assemble the Fox at the, uh, the forks at the factory so pretty well established now I've spoken about it heaps of times but after a service after I've pulled the springs apart and cleaned them all out and gotten rid of all the there's a lot of quite often there's a lot of grease in the negative side of the chamber I'll put a photo up um, show you what I'm talking about. Not of a 38, but of a 36. And uh, yeah, this is an extreme case, but yeah, anyway, there it is. Um, it's all over the place from the factory is what I'm saying. Rock shocks from the factory are almost always the same. Almost always the same. Maybe sometimes a little bit under greased, um, but they're always you know, minimal or adequate. So never really, never, I don't think I've ever seen a RockShox fork come excessive, excessive grease or excessive oils. Um, so that said, once the 38 was serviced, I've had nothing but killer experience on that 38. Absolutely sublime experience. Uh, Performance Elite and Factory, I don't think I've ridden uh, like a performance with just the grip dial, um, like a grip damper. I've always ridden the grip twos. And it's killer. It is killer. It's a little bit to find your sweet spot with the high speed rebound and the low speed rebound. Um, slower side of the high speed rebound seems to work best and then counter everything else. Um, so anywhere from, depending on your weight, if you're super heavy, maybe one click from slow um, and you're running, you know, 120 plus PSI. But two clicks from slow to three, or two to four, depending on your, on your weight from slow. Uh, on that high speed rebound and then the low speed rebound is usually almost full fast. Uh, pretty close to full fast. Uh, compression, high speed compression, so out of eight. I always go from open, I know it's, you know, everyone goes, you gotta go from closed, blah, 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 but I don't do anything backwards. So um, from open, I go three clicks in. Two clicks is a little bit light usually, and I have to run too much spring to avoid using too much free travel, like using the travel too freely. Um, when you go into the four is like quite strong, and then five, six, seven, eight is starts to become stout. It's not like a huge jump, but it's it's a, actually a great progression depending on how you like to set your forks up. If you were going um, like heaps of tokens, no support off the top, you'd run a fair bit of high speed compression to fill in that support at the top that you're not that you're not getting from the spring. I personally like to run the springs with less tokens uh, relative to your to your positive negative ratio. So uh, so the Fox 34 for instance um, I'd be running fuller tokens because of the ratio that, that's got a small negative. So I've got to bring that positive down to meet the ratio of negative and positive to make that spring curve feel how I want it to feel. So it's all relative in that, uh, in that sense. But uh, I like my spring curves to be more consistent. So not a lot of chop off the top, uh, off the, uh, behind the stroke, which is progression. Progression is chop behind the stroke. The more progression you run, the either the softer you have to run it off the top to in order for it to not be so uh, ramped up down the bottom, or you run it at your normal softness off the top and deal with wacky chop all the way um, 
into the deeper hits and whatnot. And it just it just makes the bike less supple, makes the fork less supple. Um, so you pick your poison there, whether you're going more tokens, less pressure off the top, or less tokens, more pressure off the top. Um, I like the you know, adequate tokens, but less tokens, more pressure. So the Zeb, standard Zeb, I've done a review of the standard Zeb. I haven't really touched on a review of the Luftcap equipped Zeb. So this is Luftcap equipped. I've done the Luftcap. Now I've serviced these lowers three times now, maybe four times, I think three times. Um, first couple of times, I just did them pretty standard, how I, how I would always do it. And I've found, um, and this is education that I've learned from testing magnets, learning, having the ability to adjust the negative chamber size. What I've found with the Luftcap is it's just a little bit too big on the negative, I think. It gives you too much support off the top. It's, it's almost like, um, how could I describe it? It's like, say that's your, that's your spring curve, you know, like, you know, off the top, and then that's where it ramps to. It's super stiff when it's full compressed. Um, it feels like when the negative chamber's too small, it's a little bubble here underneath, so not a lot, not enough support off the top, and then obviously you ramp for, for whatever. When the negative's too big, instead of it being nice and smooth off the top, it feel, it's kind of smooth, but it also feels like it's a bit of a bubble. Like you, it's, it's, it's more support here than there is throughout the rest of the travel. So that makes it kind of hard to get into the travel, and on the stuff where you're looking for supple support, it kind of just pops you, pops you back out of out of things a little bit. So with the fork, I've come to the conclusion that with the Z, with the luft cap equipped Zeb, uh, so the luft cap in, I thought maybe it's a little bit too big because it utilizes the whole shaft, which is the same as what the Fox 38 does. Use like util, utilizes the internal of the shaft as uh, spring volume, as well as the dome. Um, the dome that sits above. This is a uh, Lyric C1 spring. So the luft cap, the dome sits here. This is pushed up a little bit more into the travel, uh, into the so. So when it's at full extension, the equalization port is not here. It's down here. It's out of the way a little bit. So that makes a fork more supple and less. Uh, resistance to get into the travel, which is good. So the C1, that was a bit of a mistake, in my opinion, from RockShox, putting the equalizer at full extension. Um, but they've changed that with the new uh, the new Zebs, and then every fork, the RockShox, uh, Zeb, Lyric, and Pike have all got a new uh, equalization point, which is the same as the old equalization point before they did the C1. But anyway, uh, luft cap here, so you've got negative, that's all negative, and you've got all this negative as well. Now, as well as the shaft becomes negative with the luft cap. Without the luft cap, it's inconsistent whether the shaft gets used or not. Because some, so the the top of the luft, the top of the standard spring screws on, and uh, where it screws on, where it's full tight, there's a couple of holes that on some springs, on some spring assemblies, the holes line up with the holes of the top of the uh, piston head, or, or the sides of the, the piston head and some they don't. So some they're getting blocked and some they're not. Uh, so a little bit inconsistent there. Not too sure exactly how accurate that statement is, whether whether they all, you know, the air ends up bleeding in there or not, but I don't think they all use that shaft. But anyway, um, with the Luftcap equipped Zeb, the, shaft, the, the negative feels too big. So on this last service, what I've done is I've run a bit of grease and some. I ran three mil of oil in here, in this little reservoir here. So that's a little bit of volume taken up. And I also ran three fingers of grease, like grease there, grease there, and grease there. So a reasonable, I should have a photo of it, but I didn't take a photo, I just put it together. Um, reasonable dollop of grease to lower that positive, uh, that negative chamber size, just a little bit, just to take a little bit of, um, little bit of that bubble out of the top of the stroke. So I wrote it, uh, Thursday, uh, sorry, Wednesday and Thursday, like that. Uh, no, Wednesday without it, and then Thursday with it. And it was instantly the shape that I was looking for. So no token in the, no token in the positive. Um, and it, it's taken away the little bit of harshness off the top, which it doesn't really, it's, it's odd to say harsh. It's not harsh, it's harsh, it's harsh if you set it up wrong, but it's just a little bit of resistance into the middle of the travel. Um, so heaps of support, whatever, but it's just a little bit too much with a full, um, full open negative chamber. So I've gone a little bit 
smaller, which is still way bigger than the standard negative chamber. It still feels way bigger than the standard negative chamber. It's still super supple and whatnot. But that's a little side point on how I serviced the Z most recently and how I would recommend servicing the Z if you've got a Luft cap or maybe even with this new spring. So I don't know if the new spring is exactly the same as the Luft cap, but it seems to be almost identical. It seems to be more or less identical. They've moved the equalization port, they've put a dome on the top, they've done everything that you would do to make the uh, the Zeb work better, that Zeb standard spring work better, which is what Vorsprung already did in advance. So shouts to Vorsprung for being ahead of it and on top of it. Um, I just think it's a little too large. So that's a little tuning opportunity. Next time you open your lowers, if you've got a Zeb with a Luft cap, it's a little tuning op opportunity. Or if you bought the new Zeb, little tuning up, right at first before you do it for, with the new Zeb but you've always got that opportunity there. Now, back to back performance. After servicing the Zeb, it always feels okay, but it's just got friction. The new Zeb has got a different set of lowers, which lowers the friction for sure. These lowers don't really line up that well and there's heaps of friction in there. Um, it doesn't matter what you do to the air spring, how well you service it, there's a little bit of friction there. Um, the Fox 38 I did last week with the Marin, no friction, zero friction. I'll put a little video back to back so you can see uh, the difference between the two. It's kind of hard to see from the video, but you, if you look and you'll see, you, you, you'll see. But feeling it, it's absolutely, the, the 38 is softer, is, is more free of friction. The difference is absolutely noticeable. So on the, on the 36, I could go like that and there'd be no friction, ah, the 38, sorry, and there'd be no friction on this. There's quite a bit of friction. Same gear, except I'm using the 28 gold in the fork, uh, in the Fox, and in the Zeb, I'm using zero uh, W20 this time. Try and get a little bit slipperier um, for the winter. So, and that's a Mobile One synthetic zero W20. So the Zeb's definitely a little bit stickier, and always has been a little bit stickier. And that 38 is just sublime, absolutely sublime. Oh yeah. Check that out. Butter. Butter, baby. Now on the trail, that definitely transfers to easier to be on a great ride without being on a perfect setup. So, so. You don't need to be so honed in on a setup for it to feel great. The Z, you gotta be closer to a good setup to feel great because of that friction, because of that, um, it's just a little choppy. It'll just give you a little bit more hand fatigue. Feels killer, feels incredible. Feels like my Lyric, but stronger uh, with the Z, with the Luft cap in it. But there's just that little bit of friction compared to the 38. So my opinion of the 38 early was, yeah, it's okay, but not too sure if it's the, you know, if it's the big, big dog that it's being touted to be when it first came out and uh, over time after riding a few of them, now I'm absolutely convinced that the 38 is the king of the ring for sure. It is the best fork on the market. The damping is killer. The rebound tune, if you know how to fuck with it, it, sorry, watch my language, if you know how to mess around with it and find your sweet spot, it is killer. There's no worries there whatsoever. Uh, if you're not sure, just get the grip on, get the lower, version one, which is just a single dial on the compression damping and a single rebound. So um, easier to set up. And those pre-tunes, I think those preset tunes on the grip dampers on all the Fox forks I've ridden so far, feel great. Doesn't feel like it's got a wacky high speed compression tune, nothing like that, feels really, really good. So um, to me, it's definitely the 38. It's definitely the 38. Now with the introduction of these new Zebs, um, I cannot wait to see if they've eliminated the this friction and this misalignment with the lower leg. I know everyone says, oh, once you put the axle in, it eliminates that that um, uh, that misalignment, but it doesn't. It does a little bit. It does change a little, it brings them back out a little bit, but um, they're not as slippery as the, as the Fox, that's for sure. Maybe next service, I'll put the Fox 28 Gold in here, because a couple of you guys have mentioned that to me before, that the Fox 28 Gold is absolutely supreme in lowers, in fork lowers. So being winter, I would have thought it's a bit thick, but that Marin felt killer. That that fork on the Marin still felt killer with that stuff in there. So I'm running a 0W20. RockShox does a maximum 0W30, which to me is just 
it's not very good. It's not very slippery. So you change it to, I've had a few different oils. I've used a few different oils in RockShox forks. And uh, the Mobile One Synthetic seems to be really good. That's really, really slippery, 0W20. Uh, the Castrol 10W30 was good up until winter. I think it's maybe a bit thick in winter, but felt really good anyway. Um, the 0W30 Maxima is not that good. But with the release of this new fork, they've also announced that they're using a new Maxima, Dyna Maxima Plush Dynamic 0W30, which is supposed to be a lot slipperier than their old Maxima. So I'll get some of that and... Uh, the, so forks that people give me to service, I use RockShox 0W30 unless they specify that they want a better oil. Um, but with my own forks, I always use the best oil I can put in there. So um, this new Maxima stuff, I'll get some of that and see what that feels like in the fork. But I'm very eager to get on a new Zeb and see if getting rid of the friction and these buttercups that they're running at the bottom, the buttercup is... Uh, <laughs> That is, that is genius. I mean, it's been used everywhere in heaps of different uh, avenues and, 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 and industries and whatnot, but to put it on the bottom of a fork is an absolute, just, I think that's a killer move. I think it's really good. As long as they're gonna be functional and not problematic long-term, I think they're killer. I think that's a wicked idea. So that'll definitely improve the fork. Uh, the new spring will definitely improve the fork over the old spring. It'll make it like a loof cap. Again, I need to test it to find out exactly what's going on with that positive to negative ratio. See if they've made it a little bit more uh, refined than the, than the loof cap. A little bit, you know, just a little bit less on the on the negative. Um, the new damper. The new damper on the RockShox seems really, really good. It's got a coil sprung IFP, which to me, I think... I've kind of had a you know, a fairly good think about it, but I think that's going to be really, really good. I don't know whether you'd want um, the option to go a stiffer uh, IFP coil for a heavier guy and a lighter IFP. I've played a little bit with damper pressure, uh, with um, uh, bladder pressures, IFP pressures recently with the Olin Shock, and learned a lot. Learned a lot from IFP messing around uh, or bladder messing around. That that force behind the compression or behind the damping fluid. So um, maybe a heavier guy will, will want to opt for a slightly stiffer spring, but maybe Rock Shocks have already addressed that and, and tested it and gone, nut. Nah, this works across the board. So, But anyway, it's going to be super consistent. Rain, hail or shine, hot or cold, start of the run, end of a 10-minute run, it's going to feel exactly the same in that, in that case because you've got no air. I mean, obviously, the old Rock Shocks was just bladder pressure, so it was bladder expanding against the wall and then contracting again. Um, but in the shops and whatnot, it's a it's a charged IFP. So spring IFP is going to be killer. The damping should be wicked. It's got a different approach to, to setup as well. You've got the zero zero, so you can go back a bit or forward a bit um, with your setup. Still going to be the same. You just look for what works well. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think the new Zeb should be killer. But I don't know if it's going to. I don't know if it's going to knock the thirty eight off the perch. Uh, we'll see. It'll, time will tell. The new Lyric one sixty Lyric. Uh, it only goes up to 160. To me, that might be the that might be the the pick of the litter out of the. If you yeah, if you if you don't need 170 inch, you go on 160 and you're like, should I go the Lyric or the Z? If you're 100 kilos, go the Z for sure. But if you're not, if you're 80 kilos or less, I think go the Lyric. More playful, lighter. Uh, spring's been readjusted, so the spring will probably be killer like the old B1 again. Uh, Buttercups, new damper. Wicked lowers, like no friction lowers. So we'll see. We'll see what all these come up with. But I hope RockShox has truly refined their products this time around. Not like when they were, when they first released the Zeb. It was very unrefined. Creaky steerers for days. Um, and obviously low, friction in the lowers and not a great uh, spring setup. So that's my thoughts on the Fox 38 versus the Zeb. Definitely Fox 38 just gets it. Um, let's wait and see. I've got a new bike on the way. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this new bike. You guys know what it's like in the bike industry at the moment. It could be a week, it could be a year. Um, finally on the way, massive shout out to Whippets Workshop for having literally everything I needed except for a, a 12 speed GX shifter. They literally had everything I needed in stock. Um, so that build's coming along soon. Shout out Whippets, shout out. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what I'm getting yet. I'll leave it as a bit of a surprise, but most of you probably know. Um, I like the party and I don't like 29er wheels. Uh, I don't like them at the back any, at, at least. So I'm going back to 27.5, which will eventually end in 
a mullet setup. It'll eventually end in a 29 front and 27 rear. But I'm going to go back to full 27.5 and get the party started again. So stay tuned. That's probably a month away, maybe three weeks away, depending on uh, postage. I'm not sure how long it takes to get a bike from that side of the world to this side of the world to, to me. Um, but we're close. We're close. Hanging, hanging for it.